In the heart of London a shadowy figure lurked in the darkness. As the sun set over the Thames, the bustling city of London transformed into an eerie labyrinth of cobblestone streets and flickering gas lamps. There, amidst the fog and the whispers of the night, an enigma was born. A phantom that would become the stuff of legends. Jack the Ripper. The year was 1888, an era when the city's East End was a melting pot of poverty, crime, and unparalleled fear. The gaslit alleys of Whitechapel, often shrouded in an impenetrable fog, was the perfect hunting ground for a predator. A predator whose name would soon send shivers down the spine of every Londoner, Jack the Ripper. In the dead of the night, under the cloak of darkness, he committed heinous acts that shook the very foundation of Victorian society. The city was gripped by fear, every shadow seemed menacing and every stranger a potential threat. Panic swept across the city like a chilling wind leaving its inhabitants in a perpetual state of terror. But who was this elusive figure? A doctor? A butcher? A member of the royal family? Or perhaps an artist with a taste for the macabre? Theories abounded, yet the truth remained as elusive as the foggy London streets. Despite the fear, life in London carried on. The pubs overflowed with patrons eager to share their theories over a pint of ale. The newspapers were filled with spine-chilling tales of the Ripper's exploits, adding fuel to the fire of fear and intrigue. Yet amidst the dread and speculation, a darker tale was unfolding. A tale of unfortunate souls who found themselves in the path of the Ripper. Women of the night, whose desperate circumstances led them into the clutches of the most notorious serial killer the world had ever seen. And so began the reign of the most infamous serial killer in history, Jack the Ripper. The, the streets of Whitechapel were never the same after the Ripper's first victim was discovered. As we delve into the murky history of London's East End, we find ourselves face to face with the unfortunate victims of Jack the Ripper. Five women, all leading lives fraught with hardship, found themselves in the wrong place at the wrong time, crossing paths with a killer whose identity remains shrouded in mystery to this day. First, there was Marianne Nichols, a woman of 43 with a difficult past. Known to her friends as Polly, she was the first to fall prey to the Ripper's cruel hand. Before her untimely demise, she was known to be of cheerful disposition, despite her struggles with poverty and alcoholism. Annie Chapman, the next victim, was a widow who earned her living by crocheting and selling flowers. She lived a life of hardship, but her strong spirit kept her going. Her life was tragically cut short on a cool September morning, adding another layer to the unfolding horror. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes met their unfortunate end on the same night, a double event that shook London to its core. Stride, a Swedish immigrant, and Eddowes, a mother of three, were both leading troubled lives before they became part of this haunting narrative. The final victim, Mary Jane Kelly, was the youngest and perhaps the most enigmatic of all. A woman of 25 with a haunting beauty, her life was shrouded in as much mystery as her death. She lived in relative comfort compared to the other victims, yet she too couldn't escape the Ripper's grim reach. Each of these women had their own struggles, their own stories. They were all victims of a society that had forgotten them, making them easy targets for a predator lurking in the shadows. The brutality of their deaths was a reflection of their harsh realities, serving as a grim reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of Victorian London. Each victim, a tragic tale of a life cut short, added to the growing fear and mystery surrounding the Ripper. As the body count grew, so did the desperation of the London police. The hunt for the Ripper had become a desperate race against time. With every new victim, the pressure mounted, the city's fear palpable, and the list of suspects grew ever longer. Among the sea of faces, several stood out. There was Montague John Druitt, a barrister with a keen interest in surgery whose own demise in the Thames River coincided with the cessation of the murders. Was this mere coincidence or was Druitt the infamous Ripper? Then there was Aaron Kosminski, a Polish barber with a history of violence and alleged insanity. His name came up in the investigations but the lack of concrete evidence left the police empty-handed. George Chapman, another suspect, was a known wife poisoner. But despite his dark history, the mode of his crimes was far removed from the brutality of the Ripper's deeds. Could he have been capable of such savagery? And let's not forget Francis Tumblety, an eccentric American quack doctor with a distinct dislike for women, and a collection of uteruses. 
His peculiarities raised eyebrows, but again, solid evidence eluded the investigators. Each suspect brought with them a glimmer of hope, a potential end to the nightmare. Yet each time that hope was dashed. Alibis held up, evidence was circumstantial at best, and the real Ripper remained at large. The London police were faced with an unprecedented challenge. Forensic science was in its infancy, their tools rudimentary. The Ripper was cunning, leaving behind no witnesses, no definitive clues, a phantom in the misty London nights. In the end, the identity of Jack the Ripper remained a mystery, his shadow forever cast over the history of London. The hunt for the Ripper, a chilling tale of desperation and intrigue, became a symbol of an era, a testament to the darkness that can lurk in the corners of our world.